in the next couple of videos, we're going to take a tour of applications of coding methods. So for each of the prominent coding methods that I mentioned earlier, we're going to see how it's used in our everyday life. And hopefully this will give you a sense not only of how ubiquitous these methods are, but also give you a concrete way to think about each of them individually. First, we'll talk about compression algorithms. And then a little bit later on, we'll take a look at some error correction algorithms some applications of those as well. And for compression, we're only going to focus on lossless compression. There's also a lot of lossy compression algorithms, but we'll just take a look at some, some lossless compression algorithms. All right, so let's start. So the first one that we, we have to start with is Huffman, the Huffman coding algorithm. So this first row will be Huffman. Now, Huffman is really cool because in some sense, it's an optimal compression algorithm. And it's optimal among the family of symbol codes. Now, I you know, haven't defined what a symbol code is. We'll, we'll do that later on. But Huffman is optimal in that sense. And it's also, it's very popular because it's very simple to understand and to implement and it's efficient, at least in sort of smallish, smallish uh, applications. So Huffman is used for, for example, for image compression, like a PNG image or a JPEG image, like this beautiful picture of this hummingbird here. It's also used for MPEGs, Whenever you watch a movie on your computer, chances are it's in the MPEG format, in one of the MPEG formats. And both, both these PNG, JPEG, and MPEGs use Huffman uh, coding methods to compress their, their content. So, you know, most of the time images and movies are also compressed using lossy techniques. Um, the most common ones being perhaps using a discrete cosine transform or wavelet basis transform. But there's also some lossless compression that, that, they, that is involved as well. And Huffman is often used for that. So in addition to these, there's some general purpose compression algorithms that you often use on your computer, like the family of PKZip programs, of which WinZip is one, and you probably have heard of WinZip or GZip. These are sort of general purpose compression algorithms that you, you just throw a bunch of files at them and they try to compress them down. And sometimes they do better or worse. And these use Huffman. Yet another application of Huffman is audio. So, uh, you know, of course, you know, MP3s. And there's also, let me write that here, the AAC format for audio. You know, whenever you use your you know, you listen to your iPod or whatever, and you have MP3s or on your computer. These are encoded, they're compressed using Huffman. There's, I'm sure there's also some lossy compression going on there, but there's some lossless compression as well, and Huffman is used for that. And the AAC format, you may or may not have heard of it, but this is very widely used, for example, in YouTube. So right now, we are using the Huffman algorithm. And also, so your, your iPhone and your iPod and your iPad, and, and if you have a PS3 or a Nintendo, these all use AAC, at least uh, as, you know, currently they use AAC. All right, so that's Huffman. Very cool. And I said that it, that, that it was an optimal symbol code, so that's kind of nice. But... Uh, but you, there may be cases, so if it's optimal, why would we need anything else? Well, it turns out that in fact, sometimes a symbol code is not the best thing to use. And so an alternative method, which is often very, very much better than Huffman, is arithmetic coding. Arithmetic coding. And arithmetic coding is a beautiful technique. It's just really, really nice uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that it, it scales up better than Huffman in a certain sense. It, it originally had some computational complexity issues, and but those seem to have largely been overcome. And also another barrier to the use of arithmetic coding was the, the was the in, some intellectual property restrictions since IBM had a bunch of patents on it and stuff. 
But now it seems like those patents are expiring and the computation is, is, has gotten, uh, people have done good work on it to get it, to get it more efficient. And so arithmetic coding can do much, much better than Huffman. And so I think it has a very, very bright future. So some applications of arithmetic coding would be also, it, so it's also used for image compression. It can be used for JPEG and, and also the JBIG format. Usually people use uh, Huffman currently for JPEGs because of the uh, patent restrictions and all, but probably it'll start, arithmetic will start being used more in the future. And the same goes for MPEGs. If you watch, watch MPEGs, they can use arithmetic coding. It's in the, it's in the, one of the options. Uh, Skype, so Skype, if you use Skype or if you use any sort of video, you know, pretty much any sort of video teleconferencing technology or many of the video teleconferencing technologies use arithmetic coding. And another application is Flash. So if you, if you go on a website and it says, you know, loading Macromedia, well, I guess it used to be Macromedia Flash. Now it's Adobe Flash. Then that uses arithmetic coding. Another, so here we talked about WinZip and GZip as sort of general purpose compression tools. And there are also some general purpose compression tools that use arithmetic coding. PPM is one such algorithm. And also there's an algorithm, actually a family of algorithms called PAC. And these actually can get much greater compression than WinZip and GZip, the sort of off the shelf guys. These are a little bit more more uh, high end in some sense. I mean, they're like this one's free, but they're they take a little bit more computation, but they can get get significantly greater compression, especially this pack in benchmarks. This one tends to do by far. Well, at least the best. And one more application here, the the D the, the deja vu format. It's it's similar format to PDFs. It's used for, you know, documents and things like that. This deja vu format uses arithmetic coding. And it's really nice because you can get significantly smaller file sizes for large things like textbooks and stuff like that, electronic copies of textbooks. And the, the deja vu software is also just really nice to use because it's very fast and stuff. Okay, so those are Huffman and arithmetic coding. And our last little example in the lossless realm is Lempel Ziv. Oh, if I can spell it. Lempel, apparently not. Lempel Ziv. So Lempel Ziv algorithms have been around for quite some time. Not as old as Huffman. Huffman was in, was in the, the early 50s. Lempel Ziv has been around since, I guess, around the mid to late 70s, 77 or so. And Lempel Ziv was perhaps one of the most widely used lossless compression algorithms because it was shipped with the the unix sort of systems and and it and it, it it's it has some nice properties in that it uh it's a so-called universal code so pretty much any well for any yeah i mean for uh, for pretty much any given content lempel ziv is asymptotically optimal in a certain sense and that's probably not why people actually use it though. People actually use it because it's rather efficient and it's rather simple to implement. And it also tends to work quite well for the types of files that often show up on computers. So this is a, this is a fairly popular general purpose sort of compression program. And it's used for PNGs and GIFs. So PNGs also use Huffman and I think they actually use a combination of Huffman and Lempel Zip. So here's PNG, and here's a, an example of a GIF. So yeah, I don't know how often people use GIFs for this type of thing anymore, but it used to be that on lots of web pages you'd get these really annoying little animations of of stuff, and so and those are those are usually GIFs. You can encode a sequence of images in a GIF. So this is one example. All right, uh, so that's a couple things, and uh, and also there's some general purpose. You know those those PK zip that I talked about, WinZip and and GZip, 
algorithms also use Lempel Ziv. I think they actually use the combination of Lempel Ziv and Huffman. So if you have some files that you're going to compress, compress, then you're probably using some one of the versions of a Lempel Ziv algorithm. And one more application here is PDFs. PDFs use Lempel Ziv. And this here, this this PDF is a copy of the original 1948 paper by Shannon in which he developed pretty much the 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 you know introduced and solved most of the problems of information theory and at least from a theoretical point of view so it's just a, just a stunning achievement by Shannon but anyway PDFs are used for used in, uh, 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 they use the lempel ziv compression algorithm. Okay, so that's some lossless compression algorithm, some lossless compression methods. And next we'll talk about some error correction coding methods. Um, maybe we'll save that for another video. So I should mention that uh, all these, so I got all these images from various places like Flickr and Wikipedia and stuff like that. And uh, I put the, put for proper attribution, I put put the uh, attribution in the, I'm going to put it in the the, the, or the um, information below this video and put links and stuff to them as well. Okay, so we'll, we'll be back in another video when we'll take a look at error correction methods. And so I will see you in the next video.